Good afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure to present a webinar on interventions to prevent occupational low back pain. And I would like to start by introducing the team and myself. My name is Sebastian Straube, and I'm the senior author of the paper about which we are going to talk and the research project on which this is based. I'm privileged to be joined by Dr. Daniel Sova and uh, 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 Mr. Robert Boyko, as well as uh, David Ampel and uh, uh, Dr. Michael Sakari, who uh, will be uh, one of the presenters this afternoon. And uh, you are asked to uh, write your questions and ask us uh, about anything uh, that uh, you would like to know further information about. Uh, following the three presentations, first by uh, Dr. Sova, then uh, secondly, by Dr. Zakari, and then thirdly, by Dr. Antle, we will respond to the questions which you can uh, uh, send us. And uh, you are asked to uh, write your questions and ask us uh, about anything uh, that uh, you would like to know further information about. Uh, following the three presentations, first by uh, Dr. Sova, then uh, secondly by Dr. Zakari, and then thirdly by Dr. Antle. We will respond to the questions which you can uh, uh, send us. With that, I would like to hand over to our first uh, presenter, Dr. Sova. Dr. Sova, please come here. Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Sowa, and I would like to take this opportunity to present some work we did on interventions that are employed at the workplace to prevent the development of low back pain. In this presentation, I'll first start with an overview uh, where I'll tell you a little bit about, uh, give you a little bit of a background about low back pain. I will also explain the methodology we use to conduct the overview. Then I'll present some results of our overview and then summarize all our findings uh, as conclusions in one slide. So uh, it's been known that low back pain adversely impacts productivity workability and quality of life. And for most people living in industrialized countries, there is a lifetime prevalence of about 60 to 70 percent. Of these, there's approximately 37 percent prevalence of low back pain that develops as a result of work-related exposures. The causes of low back pain are multifactorial. Some of the identified factors that contribute to the development of low back pain include anthropometric characteristics, which are characteristics that relate to the individual, the size, the height, the weight. The nature of physical work that is involved is also considered a risk factor for the development of low back pain, as well as the posture that a person adopts during work, and also manual handling or lifting methods that are employed at the workplace. These are some of the factors identified to contribute to the development of low back pain. As a result of the multiple nature of AIDS development, low back pain is a challenge to diagnose as well as to treat. The various treatment modalities that have been used to treat low back pain have not always produced satisfactory results. This is because there is always some difficulty in treating an already established low back pain. 
and also some of the painkillers that have been used to treat low back pain impact alertness or cognition of the individual and therefore impact on safety at work. As a result, various prevention interventions have been uh, employed at the workplace to prevent the development of low back pain. Some of these identifiable interventions include education such as back schools, exercise interventions, lumbar support such as back belt, lifting techniques, insoles or foot or poses. Various systematic reviews have been conducted to look for the most effective interventions used at the workplace to prevent low back pain. However, the conclusions from these systematic reviews have not been very definitive. Also, regarding a similar intervention, there have been contradictory conclusions. Thus, our objective for this work was to conduct an overview of systematic reviews to evaluate the effectiveness of various interventions employed at the workplace to prevent work-related low back pain. Let me use this opportunity to explain what an overview is. So an overview is a combination of various systematic reviews based on a particular interventions. And we analyze these, uh, the results from these systematic reviews, combine them, and then draw conclusions. The method that we employed to conduct the overview included one, we identified uh, some databases where we searched for uh, certain terms on work-related outcomes, intervention, uh, preventive interventions, and other search terms which I will not have time to go into. And we searched mainly three databases, Medline, Embase, and the Cochrane Library. The results from these database searches were then screened, firstly based on titles and abstracts. Then the relevant articles resulting from the titles and abstracts were screened for full tests. And the results that met our inclusion criteria, which I will describe in the next slide, are included in our overview. After we identify all the uh, eligible uh, reviews, we conducted, uh, we assess the reviews for quality using a tool, a shortened AMSTAR, which refers to assessing the methodological quality of systematic reviews. Then we extracted relevant data from the individual systematic reviews, and then we synthesized data. So briefly, this is a very simplified uh, way of conducting an overview. As I said, we came up with uh, a set of inclusion criteria based upon which we identified relevant articles to be included in our overview. And the systematic reviews that were included should be published peer-reviewed systematic reviews, which should have, which should include or do not include meta-analysis. And the interventions described in these systematic reviews must pertain to primary or secondary prevention of low back pain that uh, were performed in or applicable to an occupational setting. The reviews that describe pharmacological interventions to treat low back pain were excluded. I'll briefly describe some of the results from our uh, overview. Based on the criteria we set, 28 systematic reviews were included 
in the present overview that we are presenting, there was a very high degree of heterogeneity based on the participant baseline characteristics, the types and frequency of the interventions reported, as well as the outcome measures. As a result, we synthesized the data by using descriptive and qualitative synthesis. The Cochrane Back Research Group came up with a system to assess the level of evidence when uh, synthesis is based on qualitative or descriptive analysis. And I'll quickly go through uh, the level of evidence that was described. A strong evidence of an intervention consists of um, Evidence whereby data, the identified data was uh, consist, uh, provided constant evidence in two or more high quality reviews. Moderate evidence was whereby there were consistent findings in multiple low quality reviews and all one high quality review. Limited evidence was where one, there was one low quality review. And conflicting evidence was where there was and incons inconsistent findings among multiple reviews, or there is no evidence at all for the uh, intervention in question. Using the AMSTAR tool, we are able to show that 14 of the 28 systematic reviews that were included were of high quality, 10 were of moderate quality, and 4 of low quality. Of all the interventions that were identified, we were able to classify these interventions under three major categories. First, devices, technologies, and workplace modifications. Secondly, educational and behavioral interventions. And thirdly, exercise interventions. The specific interventions for these groupings include for devices, technologies, and workplace modifications, we have lumbar supports and other assistive devices such as back belts, braces, corsets. We also have shoe insoles or foot orthosis and workplace or risk factor modification, all these under devices, technologies, and workplace modifications. For educational and behavioral interventions, we had back screws, manual material handling techniques or advice, and other types of instructions such as pamphlet, booklet, video, internet, and email. For exercise interventions, the reviews reported exercises such as strengthening, endurance, stability, flexibility, stretching, and cardiovascular fitness. On this slide, I would like to quickly summarize the major characteristics of the identified interventions that were reported in the systematic reviews. And as we can see, there was a great deal of variability between all the interventions that were identified based on duration, frequency, or intensity of the intervention, as well as the uh, occupations and the participants' characteristics, and also the outcome measures that were assessed. And in the next slide, I will summarize the main findings of our overview. As I mentioned, we categorize the main interventions as devices and technologies, educational and behavioral interventions, and exercises. Devices and technologies were mainly shoe insoles and lumbar supports. 
and our findings indicated that there was no evidence of effect of shoe insoles on any of the outcome measures reported uh, for low back pain. For lumbar support, we also did not find any evidence of effect for the prevention of low back pain. Educational and behavioral interventions also did not demonstrate any evidence of effect on the prevention of low back pain. For exercise interventions, we were able to show that there was evidence of effects for the prevention of low back pain on the outcome measures that were reported by the various systematic reviews included in this uh, particular overview that we conducted. And at this stage, I would like to introduce...